Have you ever wondered what makes certain people so effortlessly engaging and charismatic? Why do some individuals seem to have the innate ability to connect with anyone in any situation? This isn't just idle curiosity for many of us. Rather, it's a deep-seated desire to unlock the secrets of effective and impactful communication. This quest for understanding has led to the creation of a truly influential book, one that has reshaped the way we think about interpersonal interactions. Leah Lowndes' insightful work, How to Talk to Anyone. Lyle Lowndes didn't just compile a set of tips. She crafted a comprehensive blueprint for communication excellence. Her book is a journey through crucial techniques and strategies, each designed to enhance our ability to connect, engage, and influence. And here's the exciting part. By the end of this video, you'll have gleaned all the essential wisdom from how to talk to anyone. You'll be equipped with the tools and insights to transform your communication skills. Are you ready to embark on this transformative journey? Let's dive into the world of Lyle Lowndes and unravel the art of talking to anyone. Part 1. First Impressions First impressions are the gateways to meaningful relationships. They are not mere fleeting moments, but pivotal opportunities that can determine the course of our personal and professional interactions. Within the first few seconds of meeting someone, a complex tapestry of judgments is woven, influenced by our appearance, demeanor, body language, and even our unspoken thoughts. Lyle Lowndes, in her book How to Talk to Anyone, delves deep into the psychology of these initial encounters, revealing how they can be a powerful tool in our communication arsenal. These first moments are our chance to set a positive tone, establish trust, and project the image we desire. In a world where connections are currency, mastering the art of first impressions is not just helpful, it's essential. Lyle Lowndes highlights several key techniques in her book that can significantly enhance the quality of our first impressions. One such technique is the flooding smile. This isn't just any smile, it's a carefully timed expression. Instead of greeting people with an immediate grin, Lowndes suggests pausing for a moment when you first meet someone, allowing your attention to focus on them and then letting a warm, responsive smile flood over your face. This approach makes the smile appear more genuine and personalized to the recipient, making them feel uniquely acknowledged. Eye contact is another vital tool in our first impression toolkit. It's a powerful form of nonverbal communication, signaling attention, interest, and respect. But there's a fine balance to be struck. Too little can seem evasive. Too much can feel confrontational. Lounge guides us to maintain a level of eye contact that is comfortable yet confident creating a connection without intimidation. Then there's the power of a good handshake. A firm, confident handshake can speak volumes about our confidence and openness. It's a physical connection that can momentarily bridge the gap between strangers, creating a sense of goodwill and mutual respect. Imagine walking into a networking event. You approach a potential contact, and instead of an immediate, perfunctory smile, you pause as you greet them. Your smile then gradually spreads, signaling that your joy is specific to this interaction. The person you're meeting is likely to feel more valued and engaged, setting a positive tone for the conversation. In another scenario, consider a job interview. As you meet your interviewer, you maintain steady, comfortable eye contact, showing that you are fully present and engaged. Your handshake is firm and brief, an unspoken yet powerful statement of your confidence and professionalism. These subtle cues can significantly influence the interviewer's perception of you, often more so than the words you speak. Part 2. Small talk. Small talk is often undervalued, seen as mere filler conversation. However, in Leo Lounge's How to Talk to Anyone, small talk is elevated to an art form, a crucial step in the dance of human connection. Small talk serves as the bridge between strangers and the foundation upon which deeper relationships are built. It's the tool through which we gauge common interests, establish a comfort zone, and create a rapport. In a world where relationships are key to personal and professional growth, mastering small talk is not just a social nicety, but a critical skill. It's through these seemingly inconsequential conversations that we lay the groundwork for trust, empathy, and lasting connections. 
Lowndes offers a plethora of strategies to transform small talk from awkward exchanges to engaging interactions. One such strategy is the use of open-ended questions. Instead of asking questions that elicit a simple yes or no, pose queries that encourage elaboration, like, what did you find most interesting about the event? This approach invites the other person to share more, sparking a more meaningful dialogue. Another strategy is to be a good listener. Effective small talk is as much about listening attentively as it is about speaking. Showing genuine interest in what the other person is saying, through active listening cues like nodding and appropriate responses, can make the conversation more engaging for both parties. Navigating the waters of small talk also involves knowing which topics to embrace and which to avoid. Safe topics typically include shared experiences, like the event you're both attending, hobbies, travel, and positive news. These topics are usually non-controversial and can lead to discovering mutual interests. On the flip side, topics to avoid in initial conversations include politics, religion, personal finances, and other potentially divisive issues. These can create discomfort or conflict, undermining the very purpose of small talk. In a professional setting, small talk can be a tool to break the ice before diving into business matters. For example, a conversation might start with a comment about a recent industry development or a question about the other person's role in their organization. This not only shows your awareness of the industry, but also your interest in their professional life. In a social setting, small talk can be more relaxed. Here, conversations might begin with observations about the surroundings, a recent movie or a local event. For instance, at a dinner party, you might ask fellow guests about their favorite cuisine or their experience with similar events. This type of small talk is light, often enjoyable, and can lead to discovering shared interests. Part 3. Body Language When we talk to people, what we say is important, but it's not everything. How to Talk to Anyone by Lael Lowndes teaches us about the huge role of nonverbal communication, which includes things like body language. Body language can show feelings and thoughts that we don't say out loud. It's really important to understand and use body language well, both in our personal lives and at work. It helps us to communicate better and connect more deeply with others. Lowndes explains how to use body language effectively. One important technique is to mirror or copy the body language of the person you're talking to. This doesn't mean copying every single thing they do. It's more about gently matching their posture or the way they're standing or sitting. Doing this can help create a connection because people feel more comfortable with those who act like them. It's also important to understand what different body postures and facial expressions mean. For example, if someone has their arms crossed, they might be feeling defensive or uncomfortable. On the other hand, if they're standing or sitting in a more open way, it shows they're interested and open to conversation. Facial expressions matter too. A real smile is one where not just the mouth smiles, but the eyes do too. Part 4. Making Connections The key to making lasting connections lies not just in the initial interaction, but in the art of nurturing these connections over time. This involves moving beyond surface-level communication to create a deeper, more personal bond. It's about transforming the ephemeral into the perennial, ensuring that our interactions leave a lasting impression that invites continued engagement. One fundamental strategy is finding common ground. This goes beyond mere shared interests. It's about discovering shared experiences, values, or aspirations. It's about the moment when an individual realizes this person gets me. This realization forms a powerful bond as it transforms the conversation from a simple exchange of words into a shared journey of understanding. Showing genuine interest is equally crucial. This isn't about feigning attention or pretending to care. It's about active listening, asking thoughtful questions, and responding in a way that shows you value the other person's perspective. It's about engaging with their ideas, emotions, and experiences in a way that makes them feel seen and heard. Remembering names and details about people is an art in itself, one that Lowndes emphasizes as vital for making lasting connections. A person's name is the sweetest sound to them in any language. 
By remembering and using someone's name in conversation, you send a powerful message of respect and importance. It's a sign that you value them enough to remember a key part of their identity. Lowndes also suggests techniques for remembering details about people. One method is creating mental associations or visualizations linked to their name or details they share. For example, if you meet a Mike who works in marketing, you might visualize him standing next to a giant billboard. These mental images can act as triggers, helping you recall details about the person the next time you meet. Part 5. Networking and Building Relationships Effective networking is a cornerstone of professional success, and it goes far beyond just exchanging business cards or adding connections on LinkedIn. In How to Talk to Anyone, Lyle Lowndes provides a treasure trove of tips for turning networking from a daunting task into an enriching experience. One key insight is the importance of approaching networking with a mindset of giving rather than taking. When you enter a networking scenario with the intent to offer help, advice, or connections, it creates a more genuine interaction and establishes a foundation of trust and mutual respect. Another vital tip is to diversify your network. This doesn't just mean expanding the number of your contacts, but broadening the types of connections you cultivate. Engaging with professionals from various industries, backgrounds, and experience levels can provide a richer perspective and open up a wider range of opportunities. Once connections are made, the real work begins in maintaining and deepening these relationships. Lowndes emphasizes the importance of regular, meaningful interactions. This could be as simple as sharing an article you think they might find interesting, or as involved as setting up regular catch-ups or mentorship sessions. The key is to ensure these interactions provide value and show that you are genuinely invested in the relationship. Another aspect of deepening professional relationships is showing appreciation and acknowledgement. Celebrating your contacts' achievements, whether through a simple congratulatory message for a promotion or acknowledging their work anniversary, can go a long way in strengthening your connection. In the digital age, keeping in touch and following up has become both simpler and more complex. While technology offers numerous ways to stay connected, it also means that your message can easily get lost in the noise. Lounds suggests personalized communication as a way to stand out. A personalized email or a handwritten note can have a much greater impact than a generic message. Following up after meetings or events is crucial. This could involve sending a brief thank you message, mentioning a specific topic you discussed, or proposing a follow-up meeting if appropriate. The follow-up should be timely, ideally within a day or two of the initial interaction to ensure the conversation remains fresh in both parties' minds. Part 6. Confidence and Charisma Confidence in communication is more than just a skill. It's an aura that colors every word we speak and every gesture we make. In How to Talk to Anyone, Lyle Lowndes dives into the nuances of building this confidence, presenting it as a key ingredient for successful interactions. Confidence in communication doesn't necessarily mean being the loudest voice in the room. Rather, it's about the clarity and conviction with which you express your ideas. It's about holding on to your belief in what you're saying, even when faced with skepticism or indifference. Lowndes suggests several strategies for building this kind of confidence. One effective technique is preparation. Before entering a conversation, especially in high-stakes situations, prepare your key points. Knowing what you want to convey gives you a solid foundation to build on. Another strategy is practicing mindfulness and self-affirmation. Acknowledging your worth and contributions can significantly boost your confidence levels reflecting in your communication style. Charisma is often seen as an innate trait, but Lowndes breaks down this misconception, showing how it can be cultivated. Charisma combines warmth, confidence, and a certain indefinable quality that makes others naturally gravitate towards you. One way to appear more charismatic is through your body language. Open, inviting postures, a genuine smile, and direct but comfortable eye contact can make you appear more approachable and engaging. Another aspect of charisma is the ability to make others feel important and heard. 
This can be achieved through active listening and showing genuine interest in what others are saying. Charismatic individuals often have the knack for making every conversation feel important and every interaction feel personalized. Voice modulation is a powerful tool in effective communication. The tone, pace, and volume of your voice can dramatically alter the message's impact. Lowndes emphasizes the importance of using your voice to convey enthusiasm, sincerity, and confidence. Modulating your voice to suit the context, whether it's lowering your tone for a serious topic or using a lively pitch when sharing exciting news, can significantly enhance the effectiveness of your communication. Active listening is equally critical. It involves fully concentrating on the speaker, understanding their message, responding thoughtfully, and remembering the discussion. This practice not only aids in better understanding, but also shows respect and appreciation for the speaker. Active listeners often make great conversationalists as they engage deeply with the content of the conversation, encouraging a more meaningful exchange. Part 7. Difficult Conversations Difficult conversations are an inevitable part of both personal and professional life. Whether it's addressing a sensitive issue or confronting a disagreement, the way we handle these conversations can significantly impact our relationships and outcomes. In How to Talk to Anyone, Lyle Lowndes provides invaluable guidance on navigating these challenging dialogues with grace and effectiveness. Handling difficult conversations requires a blend of empathy, clarity, and resilience. It's about striking a balance between being assertive and understanding, ensuring that the conversation leads to resolution rather than further conflict. One of the first steps in handling such conversations is to approach them with the right mindset. This involves preparing yourself mentally, acknowledging the conversation's potential discomfort, and setting a goal for a positive outcome. It's important to enter these discussions with an open mind, ready to listen and understand the other person's perspective, even if you don't agree with it. Conflict resolution is a critical skill in difficult conversations. Lowndes emphasizes the importance of focusing on the issue, not the person. This means avoiding personal attacks or blame and instead addressing the specific behaviors or situations causing the conflict. Using I statements such as I feel or I think can help express your viewpoint without making the other person defensive. When it comes to delivering negative feedback, it's crucial to be honest yet tactful. Lowndes suggests the sandwich method. Start with a positive comment, follow with the constructive feedback, and conclude with another positive note. This approach helps cushion the impact of the negative feedback and reinforces the idea that the overall intention is supportive, not critical. Imagine a scenario where you need to address a team member's underperformance. Start by acknowledging their efforts or strengths, then discuss the specific areas where improvement is needed. For example, I really appreciate your creativity in project discussions, but I've noticed the last few deadlines have been missed. Let's explore how we can manage this better. I'm confident in your ability to turn this around. In a personal context, Consider a situation where you disagree with a friend's decision. Approach the conversation with empathy, expressing your concerns without judgment. For instance, I understand where you're coming from, and I respect your perspective. I'm just worried about the potential risks of this decision. Can we talk about it a bit more? There you have it. A thorough exploration of Leia Lowndes' transformative guide, How to Talk to Anyone. This video has unpacked a treasure trove of communication wisdom, equipping you with the skills to elevate your interpersonal interactions. If you're keen to truly master these techniques, consider this video as your go-to resource. Revisit it, immerse yourself in the concepts, and most importantly, apply these principles in your daily life. Remember, knowledge becomes powerful only when put into action and your journey towards enhanced personal and professional relationships starts now. If this content has struck a chord with you, if it's sparked a curiosity to transform the way you communicate, show your support. Hit that like button to express your appreciation, share your experiences or insights in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe.